Hello, everybody. This is Janneke. I'm now recording live from the Wellbeing Festival at Lillestrøm in Norway, and I'm here with Mark Wentworth. How are you? Very well, thank you. And this is my first time in Oslo and Norway. Lovely. We love to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I heard that you are doing or working with uh, color therapy and you're passionate about helping p people like be authentic and uh, really live their true passion. Uh, so color therapy, what is that? Color th There's so many ways of working with color. And just to say, it's been around since kind of e ancient Egypt, Grecian times. They all worked with color. Um, and so there's so many different ways of working with color therapy. My way is helping people find the colors that are within them and to bring those colors out because they're the colors that actually help us live and to kind of tell our story and help us live authentically. And authentically, it's like kind of, it helps, I believe that we're all born with a purpose and that if we find that knowing those colors helps us to live those, live that purpose much more strongly. Talk a little bit more about that we have colors inside that are unique to us. Is that what you meant? Yep. So um, I use a system called that I call color profiling and you, you take your date of birth and you, turn, you use the medium of numbers, so you use the ancient art of numerology, and you take that down to a single number between one and nine, and then each one of those nine colors actually tells you what your core color is, or what I call a life path color. And then Life path color? Yes, and then a life path color. When you know your life path color, it kind of tells you how you see the world and how you relate to the world. Let's say a red person is going to see the world and relate to the world very differently to maybe a, a blue or a violet person. So uh, I love turqu turquoise. Tur yes. Um, what does that mean? Uh, does that mean that that might be linked to my path, uh, true life path color, or is that more from my mind, perhaps? Or what? Well, I believe we have like likes and dislikes of color they help us to live let's say daily you know like you know like the weather forecast you know like the weather system it's constantly changing on some days it's sunny today it's cloudy and the colors we like and dislike are like a weather front so they help support the core colors but the let's say your core color which come which will come from your date of birth is actually the base it's the foundation and so your, let's say, loving turquoise would be about kind of liking things in balance, liking personal space and needing to kind of like to share and communicate, but having a very balanced viewpoint. Um, can this work? Uh, we talked a little bit before this interview about uh, dating and you've been on television. Uh, how does this relate to dating, for instance? <laughs> well. Um, with dating is like kind of um, well look to nature if you look at how nature uses color to attract mates you know kind of the flowers kind of like grow in a certain way of certain color to c attract the bees kind of like certain animals develop certain colors let's say during the mating season we're not really no differently so it's a sense of how you dress and the colors you wear can really say a lot about, well, if you're single, like the partner you would like to attract, the relationship you would like to actually create in your life, or indeed explain the reason why uh, sometimes people are still single after a long time. Yeah, can you give some examples? Like, uh, do you mean if I wore red a lot of the time uh, and I wanted a boyfriend and that was the wrong color for that, so that's why I didn't get the boyfriend? <laughs> well, no, like for instance, I, 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 you know, kind of I, I jake and say, well, if you think about red, red is fast, immediate, kind of, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, it's about passion. So, you know, kind of, if you want a relationship that's like that, and maybe maybe it's not so sure you know it's not a long you're not in it for the long term it's just a bit like going to mcdonald's <laughs> a bit like fast food great to use red but bright red 
If you want something lasting, a little bit more passionate, and then you would, uh, but long lasting, then you change the shade of red to slightly darker red. But most of us, I would say, when I look around, I see so many people wear dark uh, clothes. And in Norway, you know, it's popular to have a minimalistic style in their house with a lot of gray and grayish colors and whitish. So that's not very colorful. What does that, how does that influence us? Well, it's the more, I, I guess, that kind of my work or part of my work is to help people become more color conscious and that by consciously introducing colors into our life, we can help our kind of overall well-being and certainly in many of the northern countries in the wintertime, it is common that people tend to wear darker colors because it's almost like they're going into hibernation which is much more in alignment with nature you know because we're nature does go into in winter time nothing much happens so we and also we're much more inside that should be the times when we're kind of reflecting looking in what do we want to do and social and taking things inwardly so that's okay not to use so many colors in the winter time in winter time but we can also kind of help ourselves by if we've got difficult situations to do or kind of difficult work situations or we're stressed at work then we can actively introduce specific colors to help us counterbalance that so is there frequencies in the colors is that what is um or uh, affecting and influencing us? Yeah, I mean, as you know, kind of like each color has a specific light frequency and it's different kind of, so that's what draws us. From my perspective, I believe that uh, different emotions also have different frequencies and those and certain shades and tones of colors match those frequent emotional frequencies so which is why uh, i'm really interested in people's dislikes of color because people it's like the people the colors you do like uh what you show to the world it's like this is how i want you to see me this is the this is the mask i wear this is what i want you to how i want you to relate to me and the colors that we dislike, kind of they, they tell us where maybe life is not happening or our hopes and dreams are not quite yet fulfilled or indeed what's about to happen next. So can you uh, work a little with, a bit with me so we can have an example? Yep. So I, uh, I am not very fond of orange and I never have been. What? Says, says she who's wearing a shade and tone of orange. No, no, it's pink. <laughs> to me, it's very pink. <laughs> it's interesting because actually, but I would call it more salmon pink, which has some aspects of orange. So orange is still present, okay. even though. <laughs> but it's funny you say, but it's, it's a good example because I remember working with a lady and we were talking about a specific relationship issue. And for her, the, let's say the more the negative emotion was dark green and the positive one was more spring green and she said and she said oh the spring green is like this and she showed me something but it was dark green but to her it looked light green and it was more to do with what it what the dark green was connected with rather than that why she saw it in a specific way because sometimes we physiologically and or sorry, emotionally and psychologically block out the ability to see certain shades and tones of color. But I do see orange though. Yes. And oh, absolutely. And, and I don't know why I don't like it. I just don't like it. But that's personal. We, it's us. We all, we, we're the ones who make colors guilty. You know, color is always innocent. It's what we associate with it so my question to you would be okay so if you were to imagine sitting in a room which was totally orange and indeed the clothes you were wearing were that specific shade of orange that you don't like the floor was orange the ceiling was orange the walls were orange even the light coming in the windows was orange how would you feel well, the first thought was like, yep. this is too much. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> but then you stay with it 
and it will always take you somewhere. Color is a great time traveler because it, it will really, t it, maybe it will take you back to a specific memory, a different event where maybe there was something orange that was present in that situation. Like for example, a simple example was a, a lady I was working with uh, a few months ago, absolutely hated yellow uh, with a passion. And what wasn't so good for her husband because her husband's football team was yellow, <laughs> one of the main colors. But anyway, she remembered there was a time when she was uh, uh, in a previous relationship and it was going through a time of when they separated when they actually, the time when he said, her ex said, that's it. Um, she was washing the dishes and the dishes were yellow. And so from that moment on, yellow was guilty. Mm. Nothing to do with the situation. But is that blocking us like that we dislike a color? Yes, I kind of, so it stops us from experiencing the fullness of the color. So like, let's say orange, Orange is about, uh, it's sociable, it's very, it's kind of uh, sensual, it's the color of relationships, if you want to kind of have a color of relationships, so it helps us connect and relate. Second chakra. Yes, exactly, yeah. So it kind of, so if we don't like a color and it relates to a chakra point, well obviously then it sort of blocks off what we can fully experience in that energy point. So I would need to like it. Well, but see, to me, you already are because you've still got a shade, <laughs> you've still got it there. Because <laughs> you've got kind of, okay, you see it as pink, but it's pink with orange. So then it's looking along the orange spectrum and then taking it to the point of saying, okay, so where does, where's that orange which starts to make me feel uncomfortable? then you would gradually introduce that. Because if you did it too much and went straight to orange, it would be too much of a shock to the system. And then it wouldn't kind of have the, it would have the adverse effect. And it's like when we work with color in this way, it's like you drop a stone in the pond and it just ripples. So I'm always saying, okay, just introduce this color and then just watch what starts to happen in your outer everyday life. So you mean that I should um, uh, get more uh, orange things or clothes or just and just see what happens, yep. like introduce orange into my life? And yep. Yeah, yeah. Start with something like kind of maybe an orange cushion. So it doesn't have to be anything big. So just by, set, let's say, following the thing of the orange cushion, by bringing that in, because you've consciously done it and you've set that intention, just that's enough. You know, sometimes I work like in a private sessions, people turn up uh, or someone comes for a session and I would love just to say, okay, just go home and work with orange. But you know, we're human. So we like to question why, whatever. And if we could take color in the same way that we take medication when we go to see the doctor, you know, the doctor writes a prescription and said, take these three times a day. And we take them religiously without really questioning because we have the sense that we know it's going to make us better. If we could take color in exactly the same way, life would be amazing. But it's interesting because I see kind of a red thread because you're interested, you're saying uh, mostly in what you don't, the color you don't like. And I, you know, everything is duality. And I think that what we have resistance towards is actually what we need to look at because we have something to learn there is in our shadows. And that's what is interesting to see. Why do I have such resistance to it? And also going back, like why you know, what is this about? Maybe when I get it up in the light, uh, I see a situation in my life that uh, I needed to resolve. I needed to get up in the light, like maybe some inner child work in a way. So it's kind of, it's all linked. It's so beautiful. Yep, absolutely. And because sometimes it's really difficult for people to put things into words. You know, if, there's, if it's a very difficult situation, it's difficult to talk about, but if you just say, okay, if this situation had a color, what color would it be? The color does the rest. <laughs> That's what I love about working with color. 
I sense that this is much deeper, actually, that it's a lot beneath this uh, science of colors. Yeah. yeah, I mean, kind of also, I've studied a lot of kind of uh, Carl Jung. So I combine color with archetypes and dreams. I love working with dream and storytelling. So it's all the to, to me, colors are always telling stories. So I kind of help people to actually decipher the color, the story that each color is telling. Lovely. And you're having a, a conference here in Oslo, are, are you not? Like a light conference? Yes, I'm, I belong to the International Light Association. Well, actually from May next year, which is when the conference is, it's from the 13th to the 15th. Um, I'll become the president of the International Light Association. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. And the association is we're a mix of people who study the science, the therapeutic use of color and light. And we've got people coming from all different parts of the world talking about that. Here and in Oslo. Here in Oslo at the, oh, I forgot the name of the hotel, Formbo Hotel. <laughs> I think that's the name of it. Anyway, but so here in Oslo, and also on the 16th of May, it's UNESCO's first ever International Day of Light. So it's a world celebration of light. Wow, so what's going to happen on that day? So we are also creating something here in Oslo, so we've got lots of interesting things happening. We've got uh, workshops happening about someone talking about the effects of light. Uh, we've got an event happening at Duga, which is the architecture and design center. And there's a number of talks by people coming again from overseas. And we've got people at El Dorado Bookshop who are authors talking about light and color. And I'm at the Steiner University giving a uh, kind of a, t a talk, but it's going to be much more active uh, about colour in story, drama, and kind of in action. Fascinating. Thank you so much. I learned a lot today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.